Virginia Fitzgerald is lives in Natick, Massachusetts, and she is a multimedia artist who works in sculpture, fiber arts, illustration and design, photography, painting, and more. In the course of her everyday routine, much of her work breaks open aspects of the feminine experience within the universal human experience. Virginia studied art at Kenyon, and she focused on printmaking and fiber arts, and then moved to LA, where she worked in a quilt shop, and then started her own business, her own shop there that featured her hand-painted clothing. And then she went, moved around and studied art in different parts of the United States and Netherlands, and settled in the Boston area. And as she settled back here in Boston, she began painting classes over at the Danforth, and started to exhibit her studio work again. In 2006, her work exploded into photography, site-specific installations, and sculpture, including the iconic image of the dress with everyday objects she'd use. And her work from then until present can be found in many private collections throughout the country and corporate collections. She's a recipient of numerous grants and was an artist in residence, and this year she was commissioned to create a community participatory installation for National Poetry Month. It was a few years ago, but yeah. All right, a few years ago, <laughs> she was commissioned to create a community participatory installation for National Poetry Month at the Attleboro Public Library. And Virginia notes when talking about art and its impact on community with her own work, that she strives to inspire people to see the possibilities for themselves and the larger community. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Virginia, and she will tell you more about her art and her stories. Please give her a hand. Virginia. Hey, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. It's always interesting to hear what people pull from your websites and whatnot and kind of forget that I've gone all these different places. But um, yes, I have been doing lots of little traveling and my art has been always there and always part of my life. And in fact, the one business besides the painted clothing that I work, ran for eight years was a, a jewelry made out of bottle caps, <clears throat> which I think is kind of interesting because when I look back, it's always like that my art was very much on whatever I had at hand. It wasn't about that's where I go do my art. I saw these bottle caps, I thought they were really interesting, and I ended up making jewelry that was sold around the world. So, um, so from my love of the everyday object, um, as Cheryl was saying, in 2000, and it was 2006, um, suddenly I was given the gift of the image of the dress. And uh, what I'm going to try and do here is um, tell you a little bit about how it began, where it has led me, and then um, tell you the stories behind the three dresses that I've brought. And I'm going to try and do this with my wonderful slideshow here. So this is just a collection of dresses and you'll see more. Um, Possibly. There we go. Okay, so um, the dress project began, as I said, in 2006. Um, and I was on a family vacation. And at that point, I had my two girls who were um, maybe eight and five or seven and four. And <clears throat> it, it came about with a series of events. Um, I had just come back from doing, I was coming off of doing a successful gallery show of paintings and um, I was doing still lifes which again were as a mom that was what my life was still life was a food and um, but I realized that I wanted to have more of a, my person of myself in my art so this dialogue's going on in my head those are my girls at that time and uh, anyway, so um, we're off on the vacation. I have this internal dialogue going on in my head. Well, how can I make my work more personal? And 
uh, we get to this rental, a glass breaks. I have to take the girls out of the house because there was potential for disaster. So I take them out and we had this beautiful beach. We were at Wells Beach in Maine and we had I had to sort of distract them and lo and behold the universe provides a swarm of drowning ladybugs. And here I'm going to pause this for a minute. And so uh, so my girls, I mean, it was great, because it was like, oh, let's save the ladybugs. And uh, I, what must have happened was they were flying over the ocean, wind came, put them on the water. So we were collecting them, and, and this was all great. And then the girls come over to me, and they, and they said, well, what do we do with the dead ones? Because, of course, some weren't surviving. And I, of course, gave my sort of boilerplate answer, which was, we'll make art with them. And they've heard this many a time, so they're like, okay. And then they made their little pile of dead ladybugs and went on their way. But that statement ignited in my head. Um, and it kind of connected all those thoughts of what I was thinking about because I thought ladybug, ladies, you think of dresses, but bugs, well, those kind of dead bugs are kind of gross. And I thought, what would it be like if you created a dress out of these dead ladybugs? Um, so the girls are going this way and my head is going and uh, that night I couldn't sleep I was like thinking you could use the dress I mean I, I suddenly saw this dress as um, oh, a vessel of things that you could talk about things that upset me and I had been brought up with a more traditional upbringing of sort of women aren't supposed to ruffle feathers or have radical ideas but suddenly this idea this ladybug dress idea gave me this sort of get out of jail free card so i couldn't sleep that night um and then the minute the, the sun was up i hit the beach and uh the picture you saw this anyway i went to the beach and i was thinking what what would that dress look like and i I picked up a stick and literally drew my line in the sand and it turned out, I wasn't even thinking about it, but I turned out to make a life-size dress form that I then proceeded to fill in with the rocks. And they were the part of the earlier slides and it'll go around again. And it was, I, it was exactly what I was looking for. I was my I was back in that creative wonderful zone of not thinking, not wondering if this right, if it's just right. And so then I was completely addicted. And I um for the next 5 days that we were or 4 days that we were there, um I woke up and I would go out to the beach and see what materials were speaking to me. And uh another perk about this whole process was that I made the dress and then the high tide would come and take it away. So uh, there was a very, uh, the ephemeral idea was, was very heady to me. And uh, I would wake up every morning with a totally clean slate. And uh, I learned a lot of lessons in that week. Um, the dresses, uh, hello, sorry, anyway. With the dresses, I was, in that week, I faced a lot of fears. It was um, interesting, because suddenly I was doing performance art on the beach. And uh, I had never thought of myself as a performance artist, but I here I was uh, making these life-size dresses, and people, of course, would stop. And the, a really interesting example was I was doing it the first day, and then the second day I got inspired by seaweed so I had my little buckets of seaweed then I was collecting different colors there was pink and there was green and so I had my buckets and I was bringing them to my dress and a woman came over and she goes okay I saw you do this yesterday she's like rocks I understand she goes but but seaweed what why would you touch seaweed and it's like well I wanted I was looking for a certain shape and and it was speaking to me um, it also was a lesson in listening i mean i would wake up going okay i'm going to make the little black dress um because there's so many black rocks but i get out there and i realized that no that was not what was going to happen and um and so i would uh 
let's see if I can go and we'll start this again. Um, I would go and find out what, what materials were speaking to me that day. So um, a lot about the dress project is, is and I'm learning it over and over again, is uh, trusting the process and just to trust. To trust that, or in fact, trusting that instinct. Because I think so many times we are, have been programmed not to, to do what we feel, but maybe what's more acceptable. Um, and in fact, I feel so honored to come after your story because your daughter, um, her wonder and her, her calling out the small, wonderful little details of life, um, I believe is part of when I talk about my dress project is, is part of that because um, as you can see, I mean, even using the little raw materials, it's like, wait, wait, look at this. This is kind of cool. Eggshells, egg which normally people are just tossing aside. They're, they're beautiful. And so uh, here, now you'll see the, the beach stories again and you can see that's the first dress. Um, so that's the beginning. And from there, um, oh, okay. Um, from there, uh, it has led into many different, it, it's, it's just exploded. I came back from the beach with these pictures. I showed them the gallery owner who was showing my, my paintings. And he said, well, why don't you make a dress here? And, uh, and I was like, okay, and I thought, I was doing the 2D and I thought rocks, whatever. And then suddenly he's like, well, you have the whole window. You can do whatever you want. So we suddenly went from 2D to 3D. And you'll see it's after the beach ones, it's the rose dresses. And then, and then I'm off. Uh, I started doing, I had this voice. And, and suddenly I saw making dresses out of, um, I made one called the Red Alert Cocktail Dress, um, which was in response to the time, um, the Red Alert terror scare, and we couldn't take liquids on the plane. And uh, so I, that just really angered me or frustrated me um, because I was just thinking about all the, the things that people had to give away. Mostly women had to hand over makeup. Um, and I don't, have a lot of makeup, but I don't do know from my friends that's extremely expensive stuff just to to hand over. And so I thought I'd make a dress out of makeup, and that was too expensive. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to go to Target and just buy, all, and it was like no. So um, I ended up ended up using plastic bottles. And in fact, this story is a great story about the dress project again because um, I put out a little email to a artist community in Natick, because we were having a meeting, I'm like, hey, can anyone who has some extra plastic bottles, can you bring it, because I'm making a sculpture with it. And so when we were at this meeting, people were asking, why was I doing that? And I said, well, it's in response to the, um, the stopping of bringing liquids on the plane. And it, it opened up this awesome discussion because there were the people who were like, I don't care. I don't mind taking off my shoes, off my belt, handing over all my water and whatnot. And, and then there were the people who were like, yes, this is kind of a, a, a what do I want to say, a frustration for them. And, and it was at that point that I learned a real wonderful power and I think um, I have a question just like what's the greatest part about this dress project and it's it's watching people think and it's watching people question I mean I left that meeting exhilarated because um, suddenly the people were talking about this and I feel like too many times we're not thinking we just go oh okay whatever so if um, if I have to say anything uh, I would say the dress project is also about um, getting people to think. And as I say, I, I say this, I don't um, want to tell them what to think. Um, I mean, I have my opinions. But um, I, I'd much rather have um, them just stop and think about, it could be an idea, a political situation, um, or the beauty of an eggshell. Um, or what you'll see a lot uh, are ephemeral dresses because after the beach, um, I continue to, like this one, 
that was made out of a sunflower seed. I mean, the dead sunflower, and I just picked away. And that's dinner. That was that's that's life in Virginia Fitzgerald's house. Um, I came home with a five-pound bag of carrots and uh, about to make a crock pot creation, and I thought. Wow, that'd make a cool skirt. So dinner was a little late. Um, but uh, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that just stay there for a while because it, um, and just say that, so the dresses have taken me to amazing um, venues, have, have, I've, I've exhibited uh, in, in museums, in schools, in galleries. Uh, the best one, one of the best ones was that the Natick Mall asked me to put their dresses, my dresses in um, the fountain area. And uh, that was an amazing experience because I would watch people who weren't there to look at art and hadn't seen it and they were just amazed because one of the dresses was the eggshell dress and another one was uh, bottle dress um, but again I love to have people just sort of get them what ping them a little bit say hey look at this and so that was exciting and I've also met amazing people through it and um, and as I said it's pushed me into it's pushed me beyond my comfort zone um, which is a great thing and very heady and addictive so um, I could talk forever about my dress project, but what I think I'm gonna do is talk about the three sculptures that I have brought. Um, this one here is one of the few dress dresses of the dress project that can be worn. This is the dress of poetry. I'm gonna move it more in the light, maybe. And um, this is a celebration of poetry. And I'm one of those students that, when it was being taught to me in school, I thought, I don't know, you know, I, 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 I don't know why, but I thought, I don't understand this. This is just like, so I got through it and, and you know, whew, that was done. But then, as I said, with the dress project, I'm meeting all these different people and a friend introduced me to um, a, the poem Wild Geese by Ma Mary Oliver. And suddenly, again, my head went, wow. And instead of this, you know, feeling of dread that I had no idea what was going on I, I I saw visions and it spoke to me and and so then as I was on this dress journey of realizing that I had a little voice and I could draw attention to certain things I thought I want to celebrate poetry because I think there are more people than we want to know that are out there thinking poetry really um, and so I thought I'm going to make a dress of poetry and in fact I even had a big opening that I could go to and I thought I'll wear it because wouldn't it be so great to be clothed in all these beautiful words so I had a wonderful time I had weeks of books that I was scouring through so I picked out certain poems and then um, had a woman make this for me um, this was used uh, we had an old vintage tablecloth which I thought was kind of appropriate and then I designed it with these um, panels and so I was talking to some other moms most likely at the playground about what I was doing and they're like well you're gonna have a sheet with the poems written on it or a little book that you can hand out and give to people um, and I said well no because they're gonna be you know, on me. They'll be, and in fact, I had designed it so that people didn't have to sit and stare at me. They could pull it back and read. And so I said, I, I have this all, I have this all figured out. And she looked at me and she goes, oh, that's right. You're not from around here. <laughs> She's like, no one's going to touch you. And uh, so, um, and she was kind of right. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't going to give in to you know, getting everyone off the hook, because as I said, part of the dress project sort of pushing other people out of their comfort zone. And um, uh, at the beginning of the evening, no, people were like, oh, that's very nice. After a few drinks, we definitely had a few people who was who would take a look. And um, when you have a moment, please feel free to look through, because it's layered and it's meant 
to be looked at and read. Um, so this is this is a dress of poetry, which is a celebration of poetry and <coughs> acknowledging that I love it. Um, in the dark over there, but um, is another dress. I call it Dear Jeff, and Dear Jeff is a that was a commission piece. Um, a man reached out to me. Um, he had seen my work. He's a Natick resident. And he had seen my work, and he called to see if I would do a commission. And I said, yeah, well, tell me about it, because there definitely has to be sort of a connection. And he's like, well, I lost my fiance in 9-11, and I have a box of all the letters and the correspondences. Mm -hmm. And I would, I think I'm done. You know, it, it was around the 10-year anniversary. He's like, I, I don't think I want to keep it anymore, but I'd left, definitely liked to have it incorporated into something. And I said, that's good, you know, so I will. I'll make a dress. And so we met and we spoke for, um, we had many meetings because I kind of wanted to know what he had in mind. And uh, he, he didn't want it to be a memorial for her. He wanted it more to be a, um, a testimony to the strength of community and the regrowth. So this is made out of the letters and the correspondences that um, was in his precious box. And when I think of it, I think of it more as a phoenix about rising out of the, the, the disaster. I mean, he when we met, he was married and had a toddler. And he was saying his life is, he was happy. Um, so that's what he wanted to sort of portray, like that you can get through these horrid events. So uh, when, if you want to get closer to that, um, at the top are all the letters that she wrote to him. Her name was Amy, and you'll see love Amy. She, she loved writing letters. In the middle area is about their engagement, because um, it got kind of publicity. And then lower down, is the 9-11 so you'll see articles and and she was one of the ones who just went missing so there's like the you'll see headshots like have you seen this woman and then the bottom and the leaves and the seeds are all the the letters that he got in response um, letters from of course friend, friends and family but from strangers too um, all about the about his loss. So, um, and then this one's called Lilith in Blue, and um, she is a combination of my painting as well as the dress form. Also, she, um, I love the uh, story of Lilith, and so this kind of embodies the dress project because Lilith came before Eve, and Lilith was expelled from the Garden of Eden because she spoke her mind. And, um, you know, she, she, she didn't come. She, she, I guess, depending on whatever story you read, you know, they made her like they made Adam, which was from the dirt or whatever. And, and as I said, she spoke her mind, so they, like, kicked her out and then made Eve from the, the rib of Adam. So I guess they were hoping to have more of a less opinionated person. But, um, <laughs> So with that idea, um, this is Lilith, and I think that sums up the dress project. And I'm past my 20 minutes, but um, thank you very much. New York City Mermaid, open up the sparkling night with your bellowing red accordion. Your beauty is a curated wildness a fiery swipe edited by clean lines. Harness your candy apple brightness, your celebrated thickness, like a frosted diner glass, who reminds us that pink always comes from sacrificing red to white. Thank you. Bone Woman sits in the rocking chair at the corner of the old porch. <coughs> gives me a sly look and then a broad wink. No one escapes the journey to bones. We all die and pass over, and then our bones sink deep 
into the ground of the burial plot, beginning eternal sleep. All of us are born and all of us die. That is the ticket of this particular ride. Long after the mourners leave and the granite headstone reads, here lies so-and-so, long after the grass grows up, the obituary crumpled to dust, and the descendants themselves old and gray, Bone Woman still sits in the corner and has this to say, be kind, kinder, kindest, share what you know, greet others openly and give everything a go. Take every adventure that is given to you. And when the shit hits the fan, you do what you must do. Bone Woman rocks in the chair on the porch. Life is no picnic, at times it does scorch. You are tired and burnt and worn to the bone. And you know, you just end up under a stone. Thank you.